Welcome, welcome, welcome to those who are watching on YouTube later. So I do want to say that those of you, if you've decided to stay in bed, we have to look at you as working undercover. So as we go into prayer, I do want to challenge everybody. This one thing is so important. Challenge what you're doing. Are you living your life for God or are you just kind of repeating a day after day after day? The challenge is seek God, see what he wants you to do today and be ready. Lord, we ask you to challenge us today. Challenge us to listen to the sermon, to pay attention, challenge us to be changed in any way that we need. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you've been at Cornerstone for any length of time, you know that we are all about service, right? What do we say at the end of every church service? We want to live, love, and lead with Jesus. Because we believe, back in Genesis 12, says that we have been blessed so we can be a blessing. It's hard to listen well, isn't it? That takes daily intention. Mark just perked up. Are you listening? Very well. Look at you. <laughs> and then the third one was what we talked about last week. And this is the fun one. Eat together. Right, Tito? Tito's like, yeah, that's my jam right there. Then we eat together. That's something we do many times a day, right? Some of us too many times a day. And that's something we can invite people into. And it's a very... Um, it's an intimate thing. Back in Jesus' day, eating together was very intimate. So when he said, Zacchaeus, I'm come down from that tree. I'm coming to your house to eat with you. That was like, that was very personal. And so even today, like to invite somebody into your home and cook them dinner, that's a very personal, intimate thing. Then the fourth thing, this is what we're talking about today, the S, and that is to serve with love. Serving with love. You know, is there any other way to serve? I mean, maybe. Do you think? Can you serve with the wrong motives, maybe? Right? Sometimes don't we sometimes serve to get something or maybe serve to be served or serve to look good or serve to get favor. But we want to serve with love. Love has got to be our heartbeat. What are some of the ingredients of serving with love? What does it take to actually be a servant? Humility, yes, oh, top of my list, yes, Stephanie. Humility, it takes humility because sometimes we have to do things that are yucky or that are inconvenient or that we don't like or it's just we have to go out of our way. And humility says that we lay down our lives for somebody else. What else do you, when you see somebody that's truly serving, what ingredients do you see? What characteristics do you see? Stanley, patience, oh my goodness, yes. Because it's, it's easy to serve for like five minutes, but then you want to get out the door and go do something else. Let's say you were helping it maybe to soup kitchen or something, and they wanted you to stay for two hours and then clean up afterwards and maybe sit down and talk to people. That takes patience. Marguerite. Hi, Marguerite. Welcome back. Empathy. Oh, yes. Empathy. How in the world can you serve without empathy? I was driving by over by a Jack in the Box, and I look over, and there's Tina sitting on the curb talking to uh, some unsheltered person. Sometimes just talking to somebody who's been on the street makes them feel human again and dignity and value. We, on top of our regular giving, we have been collecting a facility fund. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who have been giving um, so faithfully. And if you want to donate a few dollars to or more <laughs> to the facility fund um, next slide you can just uh, do your regular giving and then just add it in i just want to thank you church as you give and i say bless you as we continue to worship good afternoon to all of you In our text today it starts out with jesus saying i have come to Dot, dot, dot. Peace. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes. Woo. -hoo! He came to bring peace. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. My peace. Not as the world gives do I give to you, right? As Anne was talking about, sometimes people give to get something in return. No, this is free unmerited 
And so we have to have this lens, this filter, this knowledge of who God is, the God of peace, when we come to a text like we read today in Luke 12, verses 49 through 59. So what in the world is this doing in Luke 12? Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? After what I just read, most of it would say, yes! But Jesus says, no! I tell you, but division. That's the biggest, that's the biggest whiplash. What in the world? What is going on here? Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth in the sky. In other words, you can discern weather patterns. How is it that you don't know how to interpret or discern this present time? What in the world? What happened to our peaceful baby Jesus? <laughs> but Jesus comes with a new way of being, a new way at looking at power and authority and the the cultural structures and systems of the world. And when you start messing with the status quo, does everybody jump up and yay, hoo hoo? Jesus is coming to mess things up. No, there are power struggles. The, the selfish get more selfish and the covetous get more covetous, especially if a mirror of truth is put in front of them, the mirror of the truth of Jesus. This is who I am and this is how I created you to live. If you don't like it, there's going to be division. In that day and age, the only way that peace was brought about is if you were the ruling authority. Caesar in, in Rome, the, the way that they spread their peace, their Pax Romana, was to invade nations and say, are you with us? And so Jesus is saying, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, if you think I'm the Messiah, that the way we're going to have peace is if me, the Messiah, overturns the ruling authority. And the only way you can do that, if it's all out war, right? Violence. That is not what I came to do. I bring division. In other words, I'm going, my way of life is almost so opposite of the way of what is thought to how you get power, how you're successful, uh, the importance of money, just all of the value, not all, a lot of the value systems of the world. Jesus comes and just knocks right up against that, which will do what? Cause division. But we have to be discerning today, too. It's like Jesus saying, how convenient. You're pretty smart, and this isn't a put down. You're pretty smart when you can discern these weather patterns. Now pick your parts. But how convenient. You're so blinded by our, your idea of peace and power, and you're still beholden to the system and the structures and the worldview that you have. I mean, I mean, you keep fighting about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. You keep fighting about who's going to be on my right hand and on my left. That's not the kingdom. That isn't the kingdom. You just don't get it. I want to see you all together. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. See that slide up there? There we go. And we will live, live with Jesus, Jesus, love with Jesus, and lead people with Jesus. Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen.